maker equations. First thing you need to have is your tables, okay? Page 79, periodic table, okay? Now, three pages later is the rest of the periodic table. Okay, so it's 82. It's the top one here, okay, and that's the, you know, the, the ones that are down at the bottom normally of the periodic table. But a lot of these are very important, we'll be using them, okay. So 79 and 82, and rather, they're done like chemistry in that they have the atomic number on the top and the mass number on the bottom. We do it the other way around. It doesn't matter as long as you're consistent, but I'll always have the atomic number on the bottom, okay. Right, so let's have a look at the questions. Right, so the first one, uranium-238 undergoes a alpha decay, okay, so we're able to write down uranium-238. It undergoes alpha decay, so nothing is hitting it, it's just decaying spontaneously, so we put in the arrow, and it's alpha. Now, you know that alpha is Hg24, okay, but over here now we're going to write down all the ones we know. Proton, H11. Electron, rather surprising, minus one, zero. Okay, a neutron, zero, one, n, and the alpha, he, g, two, four. Remember, you have to be clear on those, and we looked at them with the, with the lemons and limes earlier. Okay, so we have this. Now, we now have to go and find uranium. Okay, and we have to find out what its atomic number is. So uranium, okay, you look along the, the, the mass numbers, you're looking for around 238. Okay, you come along here, and here is uranium, and it is actually 238. Okay, so we have uranium is 92. And that goes in there. Now, we then look at the, the masses. 238 at the beginning, 4 gone, so there must be 234 left. The charge, okay, we're going to talk about charge for atomic number, 92 before, must be 92 after, so there must be 90 left. So we now have an element of 90, so we go to our tables, and we find element 90, which is here, and it's thorium, TH. That's called the daughter nucleus. It's a bit of sexism going on here, that's called the parent nucleus, and this is all it's called the daughter nucleus. Anyway, we get over it, okay, so thorium, and the, what is the daughter nucleus? It's TH, thorium. Right, you might have known it was thorium. There's a list at the back of the table so if you want to check. Okay, you get to you get to know them all. Right, that's number one. Okay, number two, the second one. Let's go through it. Carbon fourteen. Okay, so we write down carbon fourteen, and we're saying it undergoes beta decay. So nothing else except carbon fourteen before beta. So we know beta is minus one zero. Okay. Now, write a nuclear equation. Okay, so carbon, we have to go and find what the atomic number for carbon is. You'll know very soon that carbon is 6. Okay, there's some of them that we'll remember. Okay, you don't need to know them, but you'll remember them. Now, this is the tricky one. Mass number, 14, 0, so it's still 14. Now, the atomic number, don't get caught here. Okay, on the left-hand side, it's 6, the charge is 6. On the right-hand side, the charge will be 6. Minus 1 plus 7. Don't write down 5. And when you check, you find that 7 is nitrogen from your, from your tables again. Okay, and that's it. Next one. Now, this is slightly different. A slow-moving neutron is absorbed by uranium-235 nucleus. So in this case, we have a neutron and we have a uranium-235 nucleus. We know uranium is 92 from up there. That's another one you'll remember very quickly. So that's what happens before. Afterwards, you're told barium-141 and krypton 92 are emitted as well as more neutrons. We'll get onto those. It doesn't say how many, so we'll have to figure that out. Okay, so we go to our, our tables. Okay, so back to page 79. Okay, ignore 1881, that's chemistry stuff. Okay, and we're looking for, we're looking for element barium 141. Okay, so we're looking for 141, and here's 137, and there's barium. So you kind of look around the mass number in the general area, and there it is. So barium is 56. So barium is 56, and the symbol is BA. So we've got all that from here. Okay, and then we have krypton, around 92. So you go looking for around 92. There's no sign of it here, but as it turns out, it's here at 83. It won't necessarily be 
exactly 92 because the mass number of the, the isotopes could be very different. So in this case it's krypton, so it's 36. And it's 92. Now to find out how many neutrons we just have to balance. Okay, so on the up here, okay, down the bottom we have 92 plus charges. 92 plus charges, that's fine because we expect a neutron to have zero, so that's okay. The other, what we're interested in is how many neutrons. So we have 2, 3, 6 here, and we have 2, 3, 3 here. So basically we need 3 neutrons. Now you could write that as 3, 1, 0, but just for emphasis here. So 236, 236, 92, 92, we're done. And sometimes people put in plus energy at the end because there is energy released. You don't really need that, but we can put it in. Okay, next one, so, and that's a fission reaction. Okay, so remember, uranium is too big, wants to be like iron, splits into two smaller parts that are more iron-like. Okay, more iron-like as we'll see. Next one, okay, now hydrogen has isotopes. So hydrogen one is most of hydrogen. Okay, now we have hydrogen two and hydrogen three. Hydrogen is so special, it has special pet names for its isotopes. So hydrogen two is called deuterium and hydrogen three is called tritium. You may have come across those we're talking about bonds and so on, for those of you who are interested in such stuff, okay? So hydrogen 2, well we know hydrogen is atomic number 1, mass number 2. Hydrogen 3, 1, 3. They fuse together, so that's what happens before. And an alpha particle is produced, He2, 4, and a neutron. Plus energy. Okay. Now we check it, okay? Total charge before is 2, total charge after is 2, total mass before is 5, total mass after is 5. Okay, now total mass before and after, the same to the nearest whole number. Okay, now question 5, and this is, this is the, we'll be coming back to this again, this is the famous beta decay. Okay, so in, a, no, that should be beta, not a beta decay, in a beta decay. Okay, the following happens in the nucleus. A neutron decays into a proton, an electron, and an antineutrino. Oh, what's that? Okay, so write a nuclear equation. So a neutron decays into a proton and an electron and this thing called an antineutrino. Now we're not to worry about that. That's the symbol for it. It has no, no mass and no charge. So these neutrinos have no mass and no charge and uh, something that we'll be looking at uh, either tomorrow or the next day. Right, now that's what actually happens in the nucleus. So think about it. In the nucleus you're changing a neutron into a proton. So there's no change in the mass number, okay? No change in the mass number. And you're also producing an electron, okay? Now when the electron is made, it's emitted from the nucleus, and that's where the electron comes from. Now it's very, very odd, and this is, actually, don't, don't worry if you're finding it odd, that a neutron has a half-life, so it decays, it, it decays reasonably quickly, a half-life about 15 minutes, we'll come back to half-lives uh, next week, okay, and it decays into a proton and an electron, and that's it. So effectively that's what's happening up here as well, in that you had your carbon with six protons and eight neutrons, one of the protons, uh, sorry, uh, one of the neutrons decayed into a proton, so now you have seven protons, you still have 14 protons and neutrons because it's just a proton change to neutron and you also have the electron. So this should explain that to you. Okay, so that's how you write nuclear equations. It's something you need to be able to do. I think the key is to, understand, to know those four and then to be able to use this guy. Okay.